So when you're building out a website, usually the best way to build a good website is to work directly with users and get their feedback on your application. And one of those ways you can get that feedback is basically having an analytics system that tracks what your user does when they're on your site, right? So for example, when someone loads up your application, maybe you want to know what they do when they first see your landing page. Do they scroll down? Do they click on this getting started button? Do they go down in here and they play this video? Do they scroll all the way through and click on this button at the bottom? Maybe they go and check out your terms of service, your cookie preferences or something like that. Do they go and directly buy credits after seeing your landing page or do they go and click this button? And what do they do here? Like which, which one of these buttons do they click? So for me, that's like one of the main benefits to analytics is that you can actually improve your application and basically remove entire things that people don't use. So for example, I just added this section to my app where if you are a user and you have a bunch of icons that you've generated on the application, for example, I have 141, this list just becomes super long. And although it is cool to kind of scroll through them, it's hard to find a specific icon that you're looking for, right? So I added this search box where I could basically tape, type in a like, you know, feather, and that'll give me all the icons that have the word feather in it. Or I could just go ahead and just search through this and get a list of all the icons that I uh, generated. Looks like I have one called cupcakes. Um, and then also what you can do is I have a list of the most recent 15 prompts here. So I can click any of these and that'll filter down to my recent ones. I think these are ordered by date. So yummy taco is the last one I generated. Although this taco does not look um, too yummy. It looks kind of moldy. So analytics, why would analytics help me with this page, right? If I can track if people are even interacting with this component or if people are actually searching in the search bar, like let's say I have a thousand users on my application and only 1% of them even go to this collection page. And even a smaller percentage even use this, right? Let's say like, you know, out of all the people who go to the collection page, maybe 5% of the people use this. As a developer in a product, I guess you could say a product manager or a product owner, I could say, okay, you know what? It's not worth having all this real estate being taken up for my users for a feature that's only being used by 5%. Okay, so I could tell the developers, you know what, just delete this. No one's using this or find a way to like hide it away a little bit. Okay, you could maybe have like a little button here that says like find the recent prompts or something. Same with this, like let's say you see that only 5% are using the search. You could just do the same thing, like have it be at an accordion drop down, hide it away and just focus on the thing that's actually important. What if most users just come here just to see like a historic view of what they built. Like if users just come here to see like a historic list of everything they generated, then you might not need any of these. Um, and then also like I got buttons here, like do are people actually downloading these icons? Are people clicking make variant? Um, now again, you don't necessarily need Google Analytics to do all this, but it can help. So let's kind of walk through Google Analytics a little bit. I'm still trying to learn Google Analytics and I will say this is one of the most confusing dashboards I have used. It's very hard to like understand what the heck is going on here, but with enough time, I think it makes more sense. And I'll probably show you the code a little bit and show you how you can like send off custom events. So the homepage of Google Analytics basically tells you how many users you're hitting your application and how many of those users are new users. Okay, so if you needed to understand like, for example, I'm building a SaaS product. I would like users who use the application to come back. So potentially this analytics could be used to kind of figure out how do I get users who have already created an account to come back to my site. Okay, so maybe you need to do more marketing. Maybe you need to sign people up for a newsletter who sign up for your application, who bought your product, so that you can email them and say, hey, like I've released a new feature, come check it out. There's ways that you can drive existing traffic back to your site. And again, make sure you do it all in accordance to like um, whatever type of marketing laws might exist in your country. And then also here's another cool analytic, um, average engagement time. This is something that is good to track. You wanna be able to keep users on your site longer. The, the longer they use your site, the more engaged that they are. So you have to kind of find ways to like improve some of these metrics, like right? new users and users, obviously like that's marketing engagement time. That's like how, how good and how interactive is your site. As far as country, I don't see that much use of like tracking where people come from. Like. Maybe if you needed to figure out like, okay, like what type of language support do I need to add in? Like, yeah, okay, if, if like 50% of your users come from uh, like Mexico or Spain, then yeah, maybe you wanna go through here and like focus on adding in some first class Spanish support. 
But other than that, like I'm not really sure if that's too important for what I'm doing. So this one's actually kind of important. Down here, you can get your sessions. So basically, you can figure out what led people to your site. Now, I have a YouTube channel. Obviously, you're watching it right now. But a majority of my traffic comes from people clicking on the links from my descriptions and my videos. But it looks like there's also a large portion of people who come from organic search. Whatever that means, I don't really know. I have to go and figure that out. But I'm guessing that's like in Google, they type in like, generate icons or AI icon generator and somehow they get redirected to my site. Um, so direct link is probably like I've sent out a couple of emails that have my SaaS product link in the email and I also have links in my and I also posted a couple of links on Twitter so that's probably what the direct link means. Referral I don't know what these are like what, what is a referral I don't really understand what that means but overall you can kind of use this to gauge like where are people finding out that I have this this product, okay? And I wish they gave you more information about this. Like maybe you have to upgrade to like a pro plan to figure that out. But I mean, this is okay, good enough, I guess, to understand like where, where are people are coming from. And I will say, if you go to my Google search console, you'll see that I have been getting a lot of, I wanna say a lot, I've been getting more traffic on Google search and people have been searching and clicking on the application when they see it. And that's actually pretty good. The total impressions, the click-through rate's 15%. I think that's pretty good, right? Average position. I don't know what that means. Does that mean like I'm, I'm on the 10th link when they search for like any of these keywords? Okay. Again, I'm, tr I'm trying to learn all this stuff. Like there's a lot to learn about marketing and analytics and getting people to come to your application. It's been a lot of fun trying to understand how this stuff works. But this is the Google Search Console. If you make a website or a product, I would definitely recommend going to this. Set an account up here. So that you can get feedback as to like, are people clicking your stuff? Okay, so back to Google Analytics. The Let's go to the events. I think that's the most important thing. So if you go to engagement and go to overview, if you scroll down, there's like an events and you can actually get a breakdown of what events are happening. Uh, let's just go ahead and click view events here. Okay, so let's look at this. I have a video on my homepage and I added some analytics that basically when you play the video, it sends off an event. And when the video completes 100%, it sends off another event. So if you go back to analytics, I can see that, hey, you know, 55 people um, played the video and 33 of them finished the video 100%. So this helps me gauge that, okay, some people watched the video. That's pretty cool. So one thing they're able to do is you can actually add labels to your events. So in our case, so in my case, I added a bottom call to action and a top call to action label. Um, let's see if we can kind of expand this instead of the last 30 minutes. Is there a way to like scroll back? So this is what I don't like about this website. It's very hard to like do stuff. Like for example, I want, I want the events in the last couple of days. How do I get that? Do I go view real time? Like I don't care about real time stuff. I'll be honest. Like I just want to get a historic view of how people have been clicking buttons. I don't know, maybe we'll find it. I don't know, I have to look through this a little bit better to understand like how, how to get more information from this stuff. But another good thing is conversion. So conversion is basically when someone buys or signs up your product. So in my case, I have a page that you get redirected to after the user purchases some credits. And when they hit that page, I send off a Google Analytics saying that, hey, someone purchased. So right now I don't have that many users, but as you get more users and like this is more like stable, what you can do is you can actually change different things in your application and deploy it and see if your conversions go up, right? So for example, go to the landing page. Maybe there's some things you can do. You can move this, you could improve this to make it dynamic. This is something I added recently. This video, maybe I can make it become higher up or first or something. Maybe I could put the video here. I don't know. But the idea is you change a little bit of your site and then you let it sit for a couple of days and you see, does your conversions go up or does it go down or does it stay the same? Now you can also do A-B testing. That's something I'm not gonna talk about, um, which I haven't even done in my whole career before. But A-B testing is another approach where you basically, depending on who logs in, you can show them a completely different view and kind of track what they do depending on like the version of the app they're using. Now, I don't know how to set A-B testing with analytics. I don't know if that's even possible, but this is another cool page conversions. It's good to see like, are you doing things that are increasing uh, when people purchase your app? 
So pages and screens, if you have more pages, this one could be really useful. Um, basically, this breaks down your application into all the different pages you have. And it tells you how long people are spending their time on those pages. So for example, collection. There's not that many people who go to view their own collection, unfortunately. Like um, 93 views, it's like 2.5 views per user. And then 20 seconds is the average engagement time. So using this information, I could either, you can either say, okay, maybe people don't understand what the collection page is. Maybe people don't care about seeing their previous collections. Maybe people don't have enough icons that they even care about going here. I don't know. You'd have to kind of like do more insight um, to figure that stuff out. It seems like community, it seems like people like to go and see what other people are doing and generating. So that's kind of some good insight as to like the community page. But overall, most people just want to generate icons, right? So majority of people, they hit the landing page and then they come and start generating some icons and they stay on this page for the longest time. So I don't really know what landing page is. I'm guessing it tells you like after they hit the landing page, what's, what page do they navigate to? Um, and most people go to generate, I guess. I don't know what not set means. That's kind of weird. Exploring is pretty cool. You can kind of see what people do in your application. Um, I haven't really spent too much time into this. I think the path exploration is probably the most useful from what I've seen. And they have all this other stuff on the side that just is overwhelming that I haven't even looked at it. So basically, you can see how people kind of flow through your application over time. So this one is basically, you know, they load up your web page and they view your page. Um, it looks like 30 events. So 30 people who loaded the page started scrolling. Some of them used the form and then four people clicked. I don't know what that, that means. Like, it's kind of annoying how I can't get insight as to like, what are they clicking? Like, okay, cool, people clicked on something. How does that help me at all? I don't understand how Google Analytics think that this is useful. <laughs> like, it's kind of weird. Um, again, page view, I don't know what pages they're going to. I don't know what they're clicking. I see that there's a video play here. <clears throat> it looks like some people purchase from whatever page view this is. Each title and screen name. I guess you can kind of change it. So if I change it to page title and screen name, there we go, that's how you do it. You can get more insight as to like what's going on here. But now we lost like the information as like what happened here. So let's click more and see. Okay, it looks like you can click it and you can start diving down to. So like they start a session, they go to the main page. Some people go straight to the generate icons page. So I guess they have it bookmarked or something. And then some people go from the, the landing page to generate icons. And then once they hit generate icons, um, let me collapse some of the stuff. Uh, they go back to the landing page. Actually, I want to see what happens if they go to events. So when they're on the generate page, what happens? So two of them click session start, scroll, form start. Let's see what happens. So these are people who basically start typing into the form. Some people are clicking the button. I'm guessing there's probably like a form submit. Yeah, scroll, page view. So the idea is you can kind of get good insight as to like, what are people doing when they hit your site? And that's like the most important thing. You can really understand like, how are they using your site? How are they flowing through your site? Probably the most useful part of all of this, that you can really understand like how users are using it. Because a lot of the times we can't just sit down with users and like watch them use the application. You have to kind of go with analytics because it's just easier. Yeah, other than that, I mean, I would love to be able to understand like what they're clicking. So like, I know I have some click events here. Like I have a feeling this stuff is pretty powerful. It's just taking the time to really understand what the heck all this stuff is. Again, if anyone knows Google Analytics and can tell me, like I wanna know what people are clicking like over time. Like I have all these click events and I really wanna know like instead of the past 30 minutes, like let's say over the past 12 days or something, how many people click the, the top call to action, which is this one versus the bottom call to action, which is this one. I want to know how many people actually scroll through this and click this button. But unfortunately, I don't think there's an easy way to do that for some reason, so that's cool. Anyway, that's all I wanted to kind of share with you all in this video is just like walk you through Google Analytics, kind of explain why you want to use it and how I'm using it in this SaaS product. Hope you guys like watching. Um, like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you just want to find a place to talk to other developers and hang out. And like always, have a good day and happy coding.